The best leaders don't know just one style of leadership, they're skilled at several and have the flexibility to switch between styles as the circumstances dictate. If your emotional abilities aren't in hand, if you don't have self-awareness, if you are not able to manage your distressing emotions, if you can't have empathy and have effective relationships, then no matter how smart you are, you are not going to get very far. Research shows that for jobs of all kinds, emotional intelligence is twice as important an ingredient of outstanding performance as cognitive ability and technical skill combined. True compassion means not only feeling another's pain but also being moved to help relieve it. When we focus on others, our world expands. One aspect of a successful relationship is not just how compatible you are, but how you deal with your incompatibility. Gifted leadership occurs when heart and head feeling and thought meet. These are the two winds that allow a leader to soar. Empathic, emotionally intelligent work environments have a good track record of increasing creativity, improving problem solving and raising productivity. Self-absorption in all its forms kills empathy, let alone compassion. When we focus on ourselves, our world contracts as our problems and preoccupations loom large. But when we focus on others, our world expands. Our own problems drift to the periphery of the mind and so seem smaller, and we increase our capacity for connection, or compassionate action. As much as 80% of adult success comes from EQ. CEOs are hired for their intellect and business expertise, and fired for a lack of emotional intelligence. The amygdala in the emotional center sees and hears everything that occurs to us instantaneously and is the trigger point for the fight or flight response. Empathetic people are superb at recognizing and meeting the needs of clients, customers, or subordinates. They seem approachable, wanting to hear what people have to say. They listen carefully, picking up on what people are truly concerned about, and respond on the mark. Simple inattention kills empathy, let alone compassion. So the first step in compassion is to notice the other's need. It all begins with the simple act of attention. Compassion begins with attention. IQ and technical skills are important, but emotional intelligence is the sine qua non of leadership. In a very real sense we have two minds, one that thinks and one that feels. Leaders with empathy do more than sympathize with people around them, they use their knowledge to improve their companies in subtle, but important ways. Great leaders, the research shows, are made as they gradually acquire, in the course of their lives and careers, the competencies that make them so effective. The competencies can be learned by any leader, at any point. People who are optimistic see a failure as due to something that can be changed so that they can succeed next time around, while pessimists take the blame for the failure, ascribing it to some characteristic they are helpless to change. A leader tuned out of his internal world will be rudderless, one blind to the world of others will be clueless, those indifferent to the larger systems within which they operate will be blindsided. Like second-hand smoke, the leakage of emotions can make a bystander an innocent casualty of someone else's toxic state. One way to boost our willpower and focus is to manage our distractions instead of letting them manage us. Remember, empathy need not lead to sympathetically giving in to the other side's demands, knowing how someone feels does not mean agreeing with them. There is perhaps no psychological skill more fundamental than resisting impulse. 
Directing attention toward where it needs to go is a primal task of leadership. School success is not predicted by a child's fund of facts or a precocious ability to read as much as by emotional and social measures. Being self-assured and interested, knowing what kind of behavior is expected and how to rein in the impulse to misbehave, being able to wait, to follow directions, and to turn to teachers for help, and expressing needs while getting along with other children. Emotional intelligence begins to develop in the earliest years. All the small exchanges children have with their parents, teachers, and with each other carry emotional messages. There is zero correlation between IQ and emotional empathy. They're controlled by different parts of the brain. Empathy represents the foundation skill for all the social competencies important for work. The emotional brain responds to an event more quickly than the thinking brain. Teachers need to be comfortable talking about feelings. This is part of teaching emotional literacy, a set of skills we can all develop, including the ability to read, understand, and respond appropriately to one's own emotions and the emotions of others. There is perhaps no psychological skill more fundamental than resisting impulse. It is the root of all emotional self-control, since all emotions, by their very nature, lead to one or another impulse to act. The root meaning of the word emotion, remember, is to move. The more socially intelligent you are, the happier and more robust and more enjoyable your relationships will be. Cognitive skills such as big picture thinking and long-term vision were particularly important. But when I calculated the ratio of technical skills, IQ, and emotional intelligence as ingredients of excellent performance, emotional intelligence proved to be twice as important as the others for jobs at all levels. In the new workplace, with its emphasis on flexibility, teams and a strong customer orientation, this crucial set of emotional competencies is becoming increasingly essential for excellence in every job in every part of the world. Whoever has the mind to fight has broken his connection with the universe. If you try to dominate people you are already defeated. We study how to resolve conflict, not how to start it. Emotional self-control is not the same as over-control, the stifling of all feeling and spontaneity. When such emotional suppression is chronic, it can impair thinking, hamper intellectual performance and interfere with smooth social interaction. By contrast, emotional competence implies we have a choice as to how we express our feelings. Our passions, when well exercised, have wisdom, they guide our thinking, our values, our survival. Scheduling down time as part of your routine is hard but worth it, personally, even professionally. We learn best with focused attention. As we focus on what we're learning, the brain maps that information on what we already know making new neural connections. Mindful meditation has been discovered to foster the ability to inhibit those very quick emotional impulses. The act of compassion begins with full attention, just as rapport does. You have to really see the person. If you see the person, then naturally, empathy arises. If you tune into the other person, you feel with them. If empathy arises, and if that person is in dire need, then empathic concern can come. You want to help them, and then that begins a compassionate act. So, I'd say that compassion begins with attention. Women, on average, tend to be more aware of their emotions, show more empathy, and are more adept interpersonally. Men on the other hand, are more self-confident and optimistic, adapt more easily, and handle stress better. Daydreaming incubates creative discovery. Emotions are contagious. 
We've all known it experientially. You know after you have a really fun coffee with a friend, you feel good. When you have a rude clerk in a store, you walk away feeling bad. Risk taking and the drive to pursue innovative ideas are the fuel that stokes the entrepreneurial spirit. A prerequisite to empathy is simply paying attention to the person in pain. Happy, calm children learn best. Life without passion would be a dull waste land of neutrality, cut off and isolated from the richness of life itself. The human brain is by no means fully formed at birth. It continues to shape itself through life, with the most intense growth occurring during childhood. The basic premise that children must learn about emotions is that all feelings are okay to have, however, only some reactions are okay. Doggedness depends on emotional traits, enthusiasm and persistence in the face of setbacks, above all else. The Harvard Business Review recently had an article called The Human Moment, about how to make real contact with a person at work. The fundamental thing you have to do is turn off your Blackberry, close your laptop, end your daydream and pay full attention to the person. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.